today I'm going to show you how to round to both one decimal place and two decimal places. So it's exactly as you would expect and when we're rounding to one decimal place we expect to have only one number after the decimal place and when we're rounding to two decimal places we can expect to have two numbers after the decimal place. So when we're rounding to one decimal place we have to check the second number after the decimal point to see if it rounds that first one up or not. So remember when we're rounding, we only round up if the number is five or bigger than the number five. And if it's smaller than five, then we don't round up. So in the first one, I can see that the second number after the decimal point is the number five. So it means it rounds this number up one. So it changes to a five. So we're left with 7.5. So that's the first one, and I can see that's one decimal place because I've only got one number after the decimal place. All right, let's look at the next one. So again, the second number after the decimal, again, it's bigger than five, so it means you round up. So this number changes to the number four. So we're left with 89.4. On to the next one. So this time, the number that's two after the decimal here, it's smaller than five. So remember, when it's smaller than five, we don't round up. So this time, this number here, it stays the same. So we're just left with 18.1. Okay, now onto this one down here. Remember, we're checking the second number after the decimal place, and it's bigger than five, which, mean, which means we round this number up one. So it changes to 0.1. Now, on to the last one. Now, this is the tricky one, so make sure you're listening. So, again, we check the second number after the decimal. It's bigger than the number 5, which means we have to round up. So, when we round this number up, we get the number 10. Except we can't squeeze in the number 10 here. We have to spread it out. So, what happens to that number 10 is that 9 changes to a 0, and that 1 is added to the number here, so it changes to a 5. So we're actually left with 5.0. Now, don't worry if you didn't quite get that one because I'm going to do some more examples like that one later on, okay? Now, this time, if we're rounding to two decimal places, we don't check the second digit after the decimal anymore. We check the third one. So this time, we're looking at this number here to see if it rounds the one next to it up or not. So in this one here, the third number is bigger than five. Remember, that means we round up. So this number here changes to the number six. So we're left with 16.26. So everything else stays the same. It's just this one directly next to the number eight that gets rounded. Okay, this one here. Again, the third number after the decimal point is bigger than five, which means it rounds this number up. Remember, these stay the same, it's only this one that moves up one. So we're left with 9.24. All right, now this one down here, again, we're checking the third number after the decimal point. So this time it's the number five, which, which means we have to round up. So this number gets rounded up to the number nine. So we've got 35.69. Okay, now, so these are the hard ones that are very similar to this one I did over here. So this time, when I check the third one, again, it rounds up. So this number gets rounded up one. But the number that comes after the number nine is the number 10. So remember, this is when it has a knock-on effect on the number in front as well. So this number changes to a zero, and the number one in number 10 changes this one up one, so it gets added to the number zero. So we're left with 112.10. And you have to write that zero at the end, because remember, we're rounding to two decimal places, which means you need to have two numbers after the decimal point. So if you only wrote that, which is the same thing, that would only be one decimal place. You need to leave that in as well. Okay, and the last one. Again, remember, when you're rounding to two decimal places, you check the third digit after the decimal point to see if it rounds up. And because this number is bigger than five, it means we have to round up. And the number nine here gets rounded to the number 10. But there's a problem. Because this one is also a number nine. 
So this one gets rounded to a number 10 as well. So what happens is this number 1 gets added to the 5 here, so we get 46.00. So I'll just repeat, the 8 rounds this 9 up to 10, which in turn rounds that one up to 10, which changes this one to a 6. Which makes sense because you can see these numbers are big, all bigger than 5, we should be rounding up. So the only way we're rounding up is if that 45 changes to a 46. And remember, it's two decimal places, so we have to put those zeros after the decimal point so that we've got two numbers after the decimal point. So as you can see, that last one's quite tricky, okay? Normally, when you're rounding, it only affects the number directly next to it. But when you're rounding and that number happens to be a number nine, that's when it has a knock-on effect with the number that comes after that, okay? So watch out when you're rounding those number nines. So if you find yourself rounding to three decimal places, it's exactly the same method. You would just check the fourth number after the decimal point instead. And if you were rounding to five decimal places, you would check the sixth number after the decimal and so on. But it's exactly the same method. So if you're still a bit shaky on rounding questions, I do have some other videos. I've got rounding to three significant figures, rounding to the nearest 10, 100 and 1000. So have a look at those. So that's all for today and goodbye for me.